I must say it's, it's, it's really looking good on there. Um, I, I can click around for hours. I mean, a good part of my day actually goes to just watching some of your, some of your, uh, your, your, your pen and ink art that you've actually put digital color into and you can watch it fade. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it's, it's very compelling. It's actually very, very compelling. So, um, so some of the colors on the Quiet Gaze, like what, what is that pink? Is that, a, is that a color that you can just find in a Photoshop or is that a color that you created? Well, it's a color, of course, that uh, I came up with to match or stand apart from the background. In this case, it was used to uh, bring the vibrance out of her eyes. Because un unfortunately, even on the website, you really can't see this image. You, you have to see this print in order to really appreciate uh, the way the colors you know, work together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've had the pleasure of going to a couple of your art shows, and, and people just walk in and just they're almost paralyzed when, mm. they, when they look at her. They, they, they look straight into her eyes, and then she follows them around the room, and they see the pink and the hair. And again, I mean, beautiful woman that you've just really taken to the next level. Um, my hat's yeah. off to you for that piece. You've mentioned a couple of times about the eyes following you around, and that's funny because uh, when I initially set this piece up, that's what we had done. Is We wanted it to look like she would follow you around, which was a kind of interesting thing to pull off. Okay, and Joseph R. Davis Fine Art, um, I understand there's a website, there's a phone number, there's actually a P.O. box for folks who, who, who want to send their fan mail. I'm, right. I'm, it must be getting a little cumbersome <laughs> now as, as the phenomenon's growing, but are, are you still finding time to get to that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, we're, we're on MySpace, too. You know, uh, I get on there and I answer, uh, answer questions and you know, send out happy birthdays and stuff like that. You know, we're very much involved. It's very personal. Uh, kind of thing that we're in you know it, it's it's not like we've exploded and we're huge but we're like right there and we get a lot of attention and it's it's so nice to see especially with how hard both uh, Amber and I work at all this because you know we put we put everything into it okay um, let me move on to the next image here um, it's called emergence yes and it's I don't want to, you know, King Arthur, Lady of the Lake with you, but I mean, it, again, it's, it's, it, it's capturing a, a very timeless sort of ephemeral feeling of, of somebody emerging from water. And I think you're going to tell me that there, there might not have been water there at the yeah, shoot there Yeah, there, there was not water. <laughs> there was not water there. She was actually a, a, a model for an album cover that I had done a while back. And uh, I had this piece and I thought it looked really cool. So I decided to play with it a little bit and, uh, you know, doubled the image down and blurred it out so it looked like water and yeah I, I didn't expect people to like that one as much as they as they have it's gotten a really good response um, so it, it almost wasn't an art piece mm -hmm. kind of like the the moon tree here which almost didn't happen at one point yeah I understand there was there was some question about the image of the moon tree like it was lost digitally to the world for a <laughs> while and then somehow you resurrected yeah at some point I had uh, lost uh, the files of the original photos of the moon tree and I had scaled down the uh, picture to fit my business card and saved it that way on accident. And so the moon tree was gone. And, and uh, for about two years, we didn't have it. And then I went through all my back files and found just the tree by itself. And so I built it from scratch. And uh, it came out nicer than the original one. And, and of that, course, a lot more detailed and bigger. And, and that's from your, your artist eye and, your, and, your, and your, uh, the, the way your mind's organized. You were just able to recreate that again. Yeah, it's, it's pretty basic shapes. I mean. Uh, with, the tree would have been the hardest thing to replace. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I could draw trees, but uh, I think that that one just had this, you know, shape to it that is so appealing, and it silhouettes very nicely on the. Mm -hmm. and, and before I uh, get too far from the emergence image, um, it's it's a thinner image. Is that right? Yeah, it's about half the size of this one. Okay, uh, same basic height, so it can hang with them, but it's yeah. also. And when you and when you market it, is is it marketed to, to to offices, to homes, to just to galleries, the people who want to have that kind of stuff? Well, right now, um, most of uh, the work is bought by collectors, mm -hmm. and uh, that's uh, the collectors and galleries at this point. Wow. So I think we're going to move on to another image here in just a moment. Um, but you mentioned a couple of galleries. Are, are you are you showing anywhere in the Southern California area? Yeah, yeah. I'm exhibiting right now at the Source on Lake, which is in uh, uh, Pasadena, and I've got uh, all my pieces hanging there right now. Um, and then I am at the uh, Westminster uh, Mall at the Art Center Gallery. Oh, is that related to the Art Center, the actual uh, the, the the College of Design? I I don't know. I don't believe so, but it very well could be. Okay. Okay. And can folks just go into the mall? Did you need an appointment? No, you no. Have to yeah, you can just go right in the mall. Um, uh, the art center has many great artists, and I, I'm, you know, lucky to be uh, among them there. So, uh, yeah. 
Okay, yeah, I mean, if there's ever a show out there, please put it on the website, because anywhere that you are showing these pieces, talking about how you do it, I, I love to be in the room. All right, we're putting up another image here. <clears throat> uh, it's called Passing. Passing. And uh, the model's very striking. Uh, maybe you could tell me a little bit about, uh, <laughs> about who she is and uh, you know, uh, maybe how that one came about. Well, uh, this is a, a picture of my lovely wife, Amber. And uh, this is one of the first pieces that I ever created. And uh, you know, I, I needed a model. And she, of course, was my muse. So we got together, and uh, I, I, I made this image for her. And uh, so that's her face, that's her uh, body on the side there, and uh, then those are, those are my eyes, actually, in the piece. So you, you took your wife's silhouette, your wife's frame, and put your own eyes into it. Kind of a, kind of a family affair. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it, it's not like my eyes are on hers. They're, they're definitely higher up. <laughs> <laughs> as, as you stare at your, at your muse. And, yeah. And I guess there's, there's a poem that goes over the top of it? Yeah, yeah. The, the poem is entitled Passing. Mm -hmm. um, it was a poem from my uh, book, Divine Torture, that I published in uh, 2003. I'm holding the book here. Um, he's actually, so you're actually a published poet yes. as well as a, uh, a published uh, digital surrealist. Yes. Okay. And is Divine Torture still on the market? Yeah, it certainly is. Yeah, it's available through Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. So we've got poet, digital surrealist, and you told me you're getting into oil painting now? Oil and acrylic painting. Uh, oil painting, that's, that's something you just dive into. I mean, that's, that was Michelangelo's uh, format. That was, that was his medium. Um, how is it that you've been able to go transition so quickly through the, through the, through the different kinds of art? Well, I, I think it's less about how, uh, how you draw or, or anything like that. I think it's more in how you create and how you see the world around you even better. Um, because to me, sculpting even feels very much like drawing and feels very much like uh, painting with oils or acrylics or painting digitally for that matter. It's, it's just like, uh, I, I guess I really like the kinetic, you know, kind of hands-on uh, feeling with, with, uh, with art in general. So I think it's all really along the same bounds. And I've discovered that, you know, uh, people that, can, that understand how to, to bring the images or the, the fantasy in their mind out on paper or into sculpture all have that kind of same thing in common that it's not as hard to go from one to the other. It's just that people tend to choose a medium and stay with it because that's the one they're most comfortable with. Well, 